Hey, about to go out. They're introing. I'm excited and I'm excited for you guys to get a little behind the scenes of this. Amazing speaker so far. I've already picked up valuable nuggets. I like just attending and listening more than speaking because the nuggets, the value, the takeaways, the passion, the energy, all that is unbelievable. So I'm gonna spend about, my name is Cody Ask, I'm gonna spend about 30 minutes with you. I'm not long-winded. I, I was running laps out in the parking garage to get my energy going. Okay, that's one thing I do every time before I get on stage. And because of that, I believe the energy is everything. So we're gonna do something in just a second to kick this thing off, get the energy back up, okay? Over the next 30, 35 minutes, I'm gonna share some brief stories. I'm gonna talk about some things that we've done in our business and our brands to get some attention and to really take our business to the next level, okay? I'm a normal dude, as all of we are, right? And I'm gonna walk through some things that we've been able to do that I believe anyone can do to impact your brand, to get more attention, to gain more followers, maybe make more money as we got some CPAs in the front, okay? So let's jump in. So I, because I believe, I truly believe that energy is everything, I start off every keynote, every live training, every free training, every breakout session, every conference, no matter what it is, with a little bit of energy. So I got this thing, we all have our things, right? Who's got your little thing that you do, right? This is his, right? Boom, right? <laughs> As I've heard like 80, 800 times on Instagram, right? We all have our thing, okay? Right? So mine is, yeah, okay? So I'm gonna have you help me as we pump up the energy in the room a little bit, okay? As we get excited because what I've learned is I'm a better speaker, I'm a better trainer, when my energy's right. When my energy's low, I am awful on stage and you guys probably don't want that, right? Am I right? Who wants me to suck today? Dude, me neither, okay? So, on the count of three, are you guys gonna help me? Yeah. On the count of three, I wanna get the energy right, a little yeah together, all right, you ready? You gonna help me? Yeah. Three, two, one, yeah. yeah! All right, give yourselves a round of applause, thank you so much. So I was born July 9th, 1999, not to make anybody feel old, okay? Little Wynn, Arkansas. Eight, in 1990, there was 8,239 people that lived in Wynn. There's a little house I grew up in in the bottom left, about 800 square feet. My dad got started in the insurance industry. Everything we do is in the insurance industry, okay? But there's still there's gonna be some nuggets, even if you're not in the industry, that you're about to use, okay? He got started April 1st of 1990, three months before I was born. So I've grew up in the industry, I've been around it a lot. I always grew up playing sports, but my dad was always an inspiration to me of just thinking bigger, going from an agent running a debit route, going to homes to collect cash to pay for policies. That's what they did back then. Glad they don't now, right? That's what they did to becoming a manager, general manager, kind of growing in the insurance industry with him. He always said to me growing up though, before every game, every sporting event, everything I did, didn't matter. I don't care if I was taking out the trash. <laughs> As you can see it in the top left, Cody, never let anyone out hustle you. That was his motto as a kid and it just rang in my ears constantly. And so that's something that's always stuck with me. And so today I try not to let people out hustle me, right? Now there probably still people are. So maybe I need to hustle harder, okay? So there's a little background about me as a kid. Then we move into high school years, started focusing on basketball. I'm a goal guy, we're gonna get into goals in a second, okay? I would jump rope during the entire Rocky Four for two hours, every day during the summer just to get in better shape, right? I'm a big Rocky fan, who loves Rocky? Who doesn't love Rocky, right? Who loves Rocky, right? Okay, so I always set little goals for myself though. Every step of the way, I learned at early age, when I have a target, I have a goal, I have a mission, it's a little easier to hit something. Anybody, anybody else notice that, right? We probably all got goals, targets, missions. If we don't, I'm gonna tell you today why you need some, okay? So I got a little quick story. I don't drink soda anymore, but I was 15 years old. 
we were, I, I, I always went to a little Christian school, Bible Christian school, high schools and colleges. And we were at one of our arch rivals, about to play a game, 15 years old, and our best player, senior, stud, 40 points a game minimum every night, got suspended. I don't remember what he did, probably something stupid, okay? He got suspended, he couldn't play. So, I was kind of looked at as like, okay, I'm the point guard. It's a Christian school. We didn't have a ton of talent, to be honest, right? So I'm kind of like, I got to step up, right? I'm walking around drinking a Mountain Dew before the game. That didn't make any sense, okay? I learned that you probably shouldn't do that, right? In case you're wondering. So I was walking around drinking a Mountain Dew 30 minutes before the game. And one of the ex-alumni from this Christian school stopped me and said, dude, that's not going to help you beat us tonight, man. You sure you ought to be drinking a Mountain Dew walking around? I'm thinking, who is this dude talking to me about drinking Mountain Dew, right? So I go in the locker room and I set a goal. I said, you know what? I got to show up or we're definitely going to lose. My goal, I believe in personal goals and everything I do. My goal is to score 40 points tonight. Every time I touch the ball, I'm going to go to the rim, okay? Because I can't shoot, still can't, okay? (laughs) Some of us can't, I can't, okay? I'll be honest with you. And I go out. 15 layups, 11 free throws later, and dropped 41. And that was a small goal, and it stuck with me. You know what? That was a goal that worked. Maybe I got some other things along the way that I can start implementing goals into. Okay, so I learned the importance of goals at an early age. Then in my college years, I'm going to a little Baptist Bible college, playing basketball, getting a business, business management degree, minor in biblical studies, I got into the insurance business. My dad had been in it forever. I was an intern calling of a phone book for a veteran agent. Then I was a part-time agent. Then I was a full-time insurance agent. And I decided the moment I went full-time to be in the insurance business, 19, 20 years old, in college, playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester. As Rachel said earlier, most people would say, hey, I don't have time, right? I said, I got time. I wrote, I'm going to earn $100,000 this year. And 92% of insurance agents fail, by the way. Now, there are more millionaires in the financial services and insurance industry than any other industry in the world. You know, Evan and I talked about that. Sorry, Evan, with real estate, right? But it is, okay? And I wrote down, I'll make 100 grand. I want to win an incentive travel trip to the company I was with. I wrote it out. I signed it. My dad signed it. We dated it. I put it up in my cubicle. And then every day, I went out to make that goal a reality. I did some unique things. I would have call nights and bring over college kids. We would all cold call for me and book up a week of appointments and all those things. In the top right is my 1099 from my first full-time year in the insurance business, $117,391.13. In the top left, picture with Magic Johnson. That was the trip I won. He was a keynote speaker. Got a chance to meet him and some other things along the way. So I learned how important and valuable goals are. Do I believe I would have been able to score certain points in games if I didn't, if it wasn't a target? No. Do I believe I would have earned 100 grand in my first year as an insurance agent without setting that as a target? 100% not. I definitely would not have. I'd have floated through life. I would make excuses. I don't have time. I'm playing basketball. I'm going to games, right? So that was a goal for me that worked. Shortly after, we started our own insurance agency, left the company we were with, started our own insurance agency, started a 1,500 square foot office, five of us, focused on writing a lot of Medicare supplements. We would road trip to go sell final expense, sell 15, 20 life insurance policies in a week from door knocking. During this time, I was enjoying it, it was going well, but I didn't have a goal. I had kind of lost sight of how valuable goals are. Who's ever lost sight of like what we're doing and what the mission is and where we're going and what am I going to do in 2019, et cetera, right? Me too, okay? So I lost sight of it. I didn't have a goal. And I'm going to share some super honest stuff, okay? It's a lot of stuff I've never shared even on our YouTube channel. Probably should, but haven't. So I didn't have a goal. Because of that, I got stagnant and bored, just like how boring this slide is. I got really <laughs> bored and stagnant, Okay? I didn't feel fulfilled. I've been selling insurance for five to six years. I started telling myself I wasn't creative. Who's ever told yourself that? I started telling myself that a lot. And I had totally lost confidence at that point. I would use the excuse that, well, I've never been an independent agent, so I don't know what to do, and there's a lot of options, and I'm just, 
you know, we can all find excuses for why we're not being successful. That was one for me. So I got stagnant and bored. Because I get bored, I just randomly do stu stupid big stuff just to get, you know, myself motivated. So we started a call center in our office. Zero phone sales experience. No clue what we were doing. It was no North Star, but it was our own little call center, right? Made sales from cold calling about Medicare and final expense insurance. Grew it to where we were selling 70, about 70 policies a month from cold calling in the first three to four months of opening it. I, would, I could cold call prospects on like a phone book and in five hours make a life insurance sale. I grinded it out, focused on getting good at something I hated, I didn't enjoy, I was terrible at, but I focused on getting good at it. It taught me a hard skill that I still use today. Now this challenged me, but I still didn't feel fulfilled, okay? We all got those moments in our life where that happens. So I sold my shares to the call center and moved on. I always knew though that I wanted to help insurance agents. That was a thing for me. I always loved, like even as a new agent, I would drive three hours to go door knock with two new agents just because I enjoyed doing that and helping them. And it made me feel better than if I had made a sale. It just did. So December 28th, 2015, about three and a half years ago, we started putting up videos on YouTube. I guess we, I did. I put up a video, hey, I made $8,000 this week and here's how you can too with these seven easy steps. Okay, started doing a lot of that. Started a local mentorship program in my office to help struggling insurance agents. You can see my first video ever in the bottom left. Awful video, please don't go watch it, okay? In case you're wondering. Started a local mentorship program in the office. There's a, there's a picture of a little sales training. Spoke at our local university to the insurance degree department. I w in this mentorship program, I would be running 40, 50 appointments a week with other salespeople, running all the appointments, helping them all make sales, and they were making some money. Now in 2016, I'm afraid to say I made less money than I've ever made in my professional career. I personally did not make six figures in 2016. Now and I'm not saying money's everything, but I was starting to enjoy what I was doing. Now did I wanna make money too? Sure. Was I helping other insurance agents make 40 grand in three months? Absolutely, okay? But I could see that helping agents be successful was what I was meant to do. Now, did I eventually want to earn some money for doing it? Sure, who doesn't, right? But I could tell this is what I'm meant to do. Help other insurance agents become successful, make more money, get in front of people, learn to be phone phenoms. We have a show every week called Phone Phenom. So I always knew that's what I was supposed to do though. In the meantime, got rid of my Dodge Challenger, downsized her home, my wife got a job, you know, some transparent things that people don't want to admit along the way, right? Who hates, who loves talking about stuff like this? Not me. I was doing what I love, but I was still unhappy because I was thinking too small. I want to talk about how you can think bigger and impact your brand. And when I started thinking bigger, I just got happier. I just did. I thought too small for too dang long. We were putting up, I was put, put up multiple videos a week. I recorded 112 videos to help other insurance agents in my first 365 days on YouTube. Folks at helping other agents, kind of unique. Most people throw out a brand and then they're like the expert and they wanna sell everybody their new course or something, right? I didn't monetize or try to make money from helping other insurance agents or our YouTube channel or anything else for 13 months. Agents started reaching out Asking for help through YouTube and comments, et cetera. Saying, hey, can you train me? Can you email me your script? Can you coach me? Can we talk? I need help. I'm struggling, right? I can't pay my bills. I'm a new insurance agent. These gentlemen have heard it time and time again, right? Right, James? I mean, it's, the, it's probably, I believe it's the toughest industry on planet Earth. Who wants to sit down with an insurance agent for two hours and buy insurance? <laughs> I don't either, and I'm in the profession, okay? But they also started reaching out, asking for help with leads a lot because the number one thing insurance agents struggle with is getting in front of people. So I learned, learned to generate avatar leads using Filipino telemarketers to generate telemarketing leads. They'd push pre-recorded buttons to speak to prospects. It became uncompliant in early 2017, so obviously I stopped doing that. But as soon as I'd mastered it and I got good at it and grew it, I had to find something else, right? You see how there's always challenges in life and things come up and, right? So then I taught myself how to generate Facebook leads through Facebook ads. It was one of the first in our industry to kind of publicly do it, probably not 
first, because it's a big industry, okay? This got a lot of attention because our industry is always behind. The insurance industry is like way behind of other industries always. But I learned how to grow a business by being the marketing team, the content team, the sales team, and the service department all wrapped into one. I was, I was even manually sending out individual leads to insurance agents every day, multiple times a day, because I didn't know what I was doing. I grew that to $68,000 a month before hiring any staff at all, because I'm the person that just naturally thinks I can do it. I can make time. I can do it all. I'll figure it out. There's better ways. A team can be a massive help, kind of like Dylan and Keith that are on the cameras. A team can be a massive help, and I absolutely love having a team. Within 12 months, we were selling 30,000 leads a month in the insurance industry. It grew fast, but it's because of all the prior work and preparation we had done, okay? My wife wanted a new house, okay? Who, 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 likes, who likes a new home? Yeah, my wife does too, okay? So we set a goal. She's like, I want to buy this house. I'm like, babe, that's a big old freaking house, okay? Like, we just downsized. We're in a 1,400 square foot home. She's like, I, I want a new home. I was like, I'm tired of this. I'm like, whatever you want, okay? Right? Was that the, was that the right answer, ladies? Yeah? Okay. So I worked my butt off. I had to come up with a 20% deposit. Made me realize I could hit any goal that I wanted to because we made that a reality and made that goal a reality. And reaching this goal actually did something, though. It made me start thinking bigger. It made me think about, here's 70 grand as it was just 70 grand and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. But I would, and and, and I, would, I would tell myself, I remember, dude, what is wrong with you? You're just floating through life. You guys, you guys recognize the internal conversations we have with ourselves, you know, like all the time of how you can be better, how we can do more. Towards the end of 2017, I started thinking bigger. The number one thing that insurance agents struggle with is the phone. So I started doing live cold calling shows and videos. I would live dial leads in Jamaica on the beach in a tiki hut. As they're coming in, I'm live dialing them. I got my wife on one of our anniversary trips. Women won't like me here. On our anniversary trip, and I've got her recording me calling leads, okay? But it was all to help insurance agents. Started growing our team. Was producing three-hour training webinars. Started spending more money. Began advertising our company online. Started thinking bigger. A lot of us can probably pinpoint a time where we started thinking bigger, and some moves really started to impact our business. Would you guys agree? Show of hands real quick. Yeah, me too. Me too. My wife and I went to Miami, January of 2018. She's a Duke fan. Okay, sorry to any Blue Devil fans like Dylan over there, or uh, Tar Heel fans. We went to Miami. You got a picture with her and Grayson Allen in the top left. We went to Grant Cardone's office. We attended 10X. I was sitting in his office. We toured his office, did a video testimonial, started negotiating for tickets with Grant. We're like, yeah, we want to go to the event. It's in 30 days. Had no tickets. And we figured out, oh, it's going to be, uh, he said, since you're here, we'll do it for $15,000. Okay. And I said it big and slow because it's kind of what I thought at the time. We thought about it. Pulled the trigger on the tickets. I don't think if we would have bought the bigger home, I would have done that, though. But it was a solid decision something we loved and enjoyed because I was sitting at 10X2 in Vegas. Front row, you can see us right there. I was sitting at 10X and I came up with the idea. I said, Our, my insurance industry needs something like this. I need to think bigger. Why am I thinking too small? Why am I floating through life? The insurance industry needs something like this. So I thought about it for a few months after. I've got to where I don't think about things for a few months after anymore, but I did at that time. And I finally decided to pull the trigger on hosting a conference for the insurance industry because I knew I could do more. I felt like it was time to go bigger. I was sitting at the country club pool talking to my dad. May 20th, 2018, we decided to host a conference, then released Apris Nation in June, booked over $100,000 in speakers, and set the dates before we chose the venue. It's kind of backwards, isn't it? That's not normal. 
But our YouTube channel has 5X'd since then. And I'm gonna give you some other things that have grew because we started thinking bigger, making big moves, taking some risks. Spent over a half a million bucks on our first event ever. Grant Cardone, 70K. He ain't 70K anymore. Ray Lewis for 40K. Paid Nissan Stadium and their production team over $125,000. One of my first sponsors looked at me and said, hey, if this doesn't happen, will I get my money back? I'm like, dude, this thing is freaking happening, man. Don't you see what we got coming? But put on events, tough, right? It ain't easy. I think, it's, I think it's one of the toughest things in the world. People even said, hey, if there's other agencies there, I'm not coming because they'll just try to steal my agents. People, it's, it's, a, like, it's a recruiting heavy industry in the insurance industry. Everyone is recruitable. So you had to deal with that. But along the way, I was like, you know what? I need to, I need to learn how to speak to people, right? I need to learn. I, I'm hosting a conference. I'm going to be speaking at it. And I've never spoke before, ever. I mean, I think I like took the mic during my mom's birthday party one time. You know, it's like, okay. So I had to, I had to learn how to give a keynote, okay? So the Insurance News Net Conference, 30 days before our conference last year, called me and said, hey, uh, somebody told us, about, told us, you know, that you may want to sponsor the event. And I'm like, who was that? Okay, so... Tell them not to do that. No, I'm just kidding. So I was like, can I speak? Like, I don't, you know, I'll have a booth, whatever, but can I speak? They're like, well, yeah, if you give us some money. I'm like, okay, I'll sponsor three booths. I'll speak. I'll be a vendor, et cetera. And they said, they said, well, it's, okay, it's, it'll be 30 grand. So I got them down and, you know, acted like I really didn't want to speak, even though I really wanted to speak, right? They ended up cutting them a check for $19,000. You can see this trend of starting to do things. That conference, we met several other people, relationships, vendors, and sponsors that are at 8% now every single year because of this event, and it all continues to lead along the way to the next thing. So after Insurance News Net, here comes April Nation 2018. I had to move my office into my desk, into my sales room to help sell tickets. And TO, or takeover, as call centers call it, to literally every call. We had 454 attendees at our first event. We raised $197,000 in sponsorships, something we've never done before. And I lost over $200,000 the first year. But I have a big smile on my face, don't I? Because here's what we gained. And we've made money since then to benefit that, okay? But here's what we gained. Attention, followers, clients, respect, relationships with their, which are invaluable. I truly believe relationships are the best part of business. Who agrees with that? Say yes if you agree with relationships. Yes, 100%. And the confidence to achieve anything. I'm like, dude, if I can pull this off, without any clue what I'm doing, I've never even planned a birthday party, then we can do anything, right? And it was one of the best decisions in my life. Truly was. Last year, we had finished the year. There's a stripe from one of our companies. We had over 3.5 million total in 2018. Then we started, I'm like, you know what? I want to do retreats for the insurance industry. I want to start thinking different. I believe in like bringing people together, really hanging out and getting to know one another. People end up wanting to be clients afterwards. I went to Birch Retreat, joined Monster Producers because I went to the retreat that you almost went to in Seaside for the couples retreat, okay? First retreat was in Phoenix at a 9,000 square foot mansion because I'm like, if I'm gonna do something, I'm not gonna go small. Second retreat, second intimate retreat to help insurance agents. They're more like insurance marketing retreats. Was at a 15,000 square foot mega mansion in Tampa, Florida. We rented a helicopter while we were there to record a YouTube ad because every time we go somewhere, we record some type of ad every single time. I well, should have shown the one that we recorded at the Phoenix one, Dylan, uh, that I was, it ended with me jumping in the pool with all my clothes on, okay? And that was impromptu. So after retreats, I'm sitting here doing retreats and a, 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 a video by Ping June pops up on my YouTube. Who's ever heard of Ping June? Very few, okay. About a million followers on Facebook, 
ton of YouTube videos. And I saw this video, how to make six figures from doing live events, smaller events. And it really got my attention. So, and I saw that on a Saturday. So that Saturday, I decided I'm going to master free live training events, getting attention, getting in front of people. So I started doing free live insurance trainings all over the country. The same day, I literally set up all the cities and I had never thrown like free events, advertising, get people to do a free event, that kind of thing. We picked all the cities that weekend. I fell on my face though during my first event ever and learned along the way. Dallas event. 168 people registered for our first ever free live. I put out 72 chairs. 17 people showed up. <laughs> but we learned to market, advertise, promote, and the exact numbers needed to have a successful event. I learned, if you ever do events, something you'll learn, especially free. I needed 100 plus to register through our ad funnels and 40 plus to phone confirm just to get 20 plus to show. Then we ran 15 of these events for about five to six weeks. I was literally speaking four times a week. We traveled and spoke in Dallas three times, Houston twice, San Antonio, Austin, Little Rock, New Orleans, Nashville, Charlotte, Atlanta, Memphis, St. Louis, and Tampa. All because I was like, I wanna try this. So you can see a trend. Then comes April Station 2019 this year, starts tomorrow, it's, it's also Saturday. We sold out the entire five-star hotel at downtown Dallas. Sold over 200 rooms in the last 14 days. Hired Michael Irvin as a keynote speaker and really wanted to focus more on the experience this year. Evan Stewart speaking, Ramiz is speaking, okay? Coach Burt speaking. Along the way though, most, most people don't know is this year I was sitting at a retreat, one of our insurance retreats, and I got a phone call, actually and a text and an email on the same weekend. And someone said, my, I bought a ticket and my manager's telling me I can't go because I'm going to get recruited. I'm like, I got a lot of money on the line, a lot of time invested in this. So in that moment, I, I, I literally I got off the phone. And I'm like, babe, I'm not going to allow recruiters anymore. I'm going to give back all the money I got from sponsors that are agencies or IMOs or FMOs that could recruit someone. Instant decision. Same weekend, I immediately reached out to every single one of those vendors and gave back $50,000 because I want Eperson Nation to go to 10,000 agents one day. And if I allow a ton of recruiting, it's never going to happen. So I started thinking more long term. I believe everyone needs a team. As you grow, you need a team, man. So we have 25 team members. We spend about over 600 grand a year on payroll. We upgraded to a 9,000 square foot office that me and my dad share. I've spent over $50,000 on our new studio and our inside sales team does over $50,000 a week now. We also do a ton of, ton of content marketing. We just passed 8,600 insurance agent YouTube subscribers in a niche yesterday. Put up over 1,200 videos online in the last 42 months. We produce five live shows a week. We start an Apers Nation podcast. We get about a thousand organic inbound leads a month to our HubSpot of people that are watching and finding us. And we spend over $30,000 a month marketing our brands. I believe in content marketing. Rachel said earlier how important it is. Who feels like, random question, who feels like you are producing enough content at this point? I still don't. Only because I heard somebody say the other day, they said, okay, think of the marketing world or the business world as this massive ocean and you're over there throwing a video in it. We do a lot. Landon, do we do a lot or do we do a lot? We do a lot. But we can still do a lot more. This year we'll finish over $5 million total, probably closer to six. We spend about $300,000 a month just on Facebook ads. We manage another $300,000 a month for our insurance agency clients. We post 20 videos a week now, five to six live videos a week, 16 blogs a month. And because we aggressively put so much money back into our business, our accounting team and my wife pay me less than hundred grand a year because money is not something that like, oh, I got a bunch of money, I'm really happy, right? You can tell I'm happy and addicted to freaking and obsessed 
with taking risks and doing some big stuff and getting more attention, helping more people. I just am. So what's next? I always get a lot of questions about, hey, dude, what's next, man? You're doing some crazy stuff. What's next? I want to own an airplane in the next 12 months. Don't tell Judge Graham to tell uh, Verity, okay? <laughs> I want to buy a retreat house. I want to grow 8% nation to 10,000 agents one day. I want to grow our YouTube channel to 100,000 unique insurance agent subscribers. I want to host a charity golf tournament, and I want to give away a car to an agent for Christmas every year, at least one. And I'm still thinking way too small. Hopefully this will challenge some of you to realize we can do more. Who feels like, say yes if you think you can do more? Yeah. Me and you both. And I know we all can. So I want to give you some tips that help me. I used to procrastinate way too much. Judge said earlier, time kills all deals. The more I think about something, the less likely I am to ever pull the trigger. I make quick decisions. Landon was talking to me about my PowerPoint about a week ago. He's like, dude, here's what you ought to speak on. And he said, you view money as like, you know, maybe we're stealing it from Wolf of Wall Street. He said, but you view money as like fun coupons. You know, it is a tool to get our company from point A to point B, right? It does not have to go in my pocket. If it helps you further your mission, then do it. Don't even think about it. Evan did this because it helped him further his mission. True? Focus on being the best version of yourself. I believe in trying to reach my best self. And I'm not even close. Force yourself to do things that you don't want to do. That's a little unique. People don't like doing stuff they don't want to do. I force myself to do stuff I hate. And I'll tell you why in a second. Push yourself till you're uncomfortable and make your mission about helping others. As long as you're doing it for the right reasons and you stay humble, it'll work out. Okay, so there's some tips. Let me keep it up there. Are you good? I also believe that everything we do is kind of a mental game that we're playing with ourselves and we have to stay mentally tough. So here's some things I do to stay sharp, to stay mentally tough, to try to be my best self. Work out. I love taking a cold shower every morning. It wakes me the freak up. <laughs> Write my goals down twice a day. I believe in thinking about my goals constantly. If it doesn't help me reach my mission and my goal, I don't do it. I don't drink soda anymore. Food is fuel. I eat breakfast. I love to eat a couple boiled eggs every morning. I learn from books, audio, and videos every single day. Who thinks, you can, who thinks, who thinks we have some space to like learn a little bit more? Yeah, me and you both. And I create a daily top three to-do list. Every day, I'm doing this. Tomorrow, I'm doing this. And I wake up. And I'm able to chalk some stuff up off of my to-do list instead of just saying, well, I don't want to make this cold call, so I'm going to go over here and drink some coffee and, and talk to Bob that's not doing anything. And, you know, I'm going to take an early lunch and spend three hours at lunch. And before you know it, the day's over. And what did I get accomplished? Not a lot. So I want to challenge you for a quick second as I wrap up. What are your goals? I believe everyone needs to know where you're going. You got to have some goals. You got to have a mission. You got to write it down every single day. If you don't have a goal, think about adopting one today. Okay, this is a great place. This is a great environment to start thinking bigger, start thinking about goals and start taking yourself to the next level. They said I should come up with some steps for reaching your full potential. So here's, here's a few steps. Determine your mission. We talked about that. Find creative ways to execute on that mission. I had to come up with some creative, crazy ways to execute. Become a content monster. Okay, Coach Berto liked that one. <laughs> Don't be afraid to use money. Some fun coupons, okay? And take massive risk. Who believes you've taken the biggest risk that you'll ever take? I haven't either. I haven't either. So I want to leave you and challenge you real quick. I believe everyone was born to do something great. Who agrees with that? I believe we should stop playing life so small. And I want to challenge you real quick. How do you want to be remembered? 
I want one day when they say the word insurance, they say, you know what? That dude did more for that industry than anyone else on planet Earth ever. That's what I want to leave to my industry. What do you want to leave to your industry? Thank you. Stop dreaming.